Hey everybody, Dan here. In this video, we're going to dig deep into some of the more advanced things you could do inside of the Layers module. I selected these three photos because I want to create a composite. I want to take bits and pieces of all three to combine them together. And Layers is the place to do that. That's the main reason you're going to go to Layers is to combine multiple photos. So what I've done is I've selected the three photos that I'm interested in, and I'm going to click on the Layers module. Be sure you select the Add as a Layers option. This will stack the three different photos together into one multi-layered photo. Now in this case, my three photos were all raw photos, and I'd use the Develop module to do some adjustments to all three. I'd remove some dust, and I adjusted my highlights and shadows and such. Now, it's combined them together. The first thing I'm going to do is name these layers so I can keep track of them easily. Now you notice there is a little thumbnail that helps you out as well, but let's go and name them. So simply double click on a layer to change the name. The first one here is the waves, so I'm going to call it waves. And the second one, if I turn it off, there's a little button right here where I can turn a layer off. The second one happens to be the rock, so we'll call it rock. And then the bottom one is my sky, so we'll call this sky. Now, if you want to reorder your photos, simply drag and drop them into the order that you want them to be. I actually want them in the opposite order that they are. I want the waves at the bottom, the rock in the middle, and the sky on top. So I'm just going to drag that sky layer up to the top. And then I'm going to grab the waves layer. I'm going to stick it down here at the bottom. There we go. So that's kind of the order that we're going to work on them. So if we look at the very bottom photo here, there's the waves. That's kind of our base photo. The next thing we want to do is we want to take the rock and we want to insert it into the photo to kind of put it right over here. So I'm going to turn that rock layer on. Now, obviously, the rock is way too big. That wouldn't look natural there. So I need to do two things. First off, I need to cut the rock out. And then second, I need to scale and position the rock in my photo. Now, there's lots of ways that we could cut the rock out using different masking techniques. For me, the easiest one to use is the Quick Mask tool. That's the second tool down in the masking tool well. To use the Quick Mask tool, you just simply create kind of a lazy brush stroke around the area that you want to get rid of. So I'm just going to kind of go like this and mark the areas that I'm not interested in, and then I'll let go. It then intelligently figures out the area that I want to mask or remove from my photo. There you go. You can see how that's removed everything except for the rock. That was pretty amazing if you think about it. Now I'm going to use the Move tool. The Move tool is what we use to size and position our layers. So now I'll just simply move this around. I can grab a corner and shrink the layer down in size so I can kind of position this rock. I want to make it look like it's further out in the ocean. There we go. It's also a little crooked. So if I come out to the outside of the handles, I can rotate it to make it level with my photo. I'm going to bring it down so it's kind of sitting over here in the waves. There we go. Something kind of like that. When I'm happy, just hit the apply button. Now, we need to make it blend in a little bit better. Let's zoom in and take a look at what it looks like here. Let's zoom up to 100. Now, that's not too bad, but it still looks a little bit fake. So there's a couple tools for refining that mask to make it blend in better. The first one we want to use is the chisel tool. Over here in the refine section of masking, there's the refine brush. That's really handy if you're painting out hair or tree branches, things that are semi-transparent. Next is the chisel tool, and below that is the blur tool. We're going to use the chisel and blur tool to improve this mask. I'm going to use the chisel tool, and it's going to take off just a pixel or so just along the edge. Let me zoom in even closer so you can take a close look at this. We're at 200% on this photo. Now watch, as I brush this along the edge, it's just taking off a pixel along the edge to make it a little cleaner and a little bit softer, just like that. Now the Blur tool could be useful along here as well. If I select the Blur tool and I run the Blur tool along it, it's going to blur it. Now that's a little too much blur, so let's go to our amount. I'm going to bring that down to about a 2 or a 3. We want to just soften the edge of that mask just a little bit. Even a 2 is too big. Let's go to a 1. There we go. Got to remember I'm zoomed in really close here at 200%, so it doesn't take a whole lot to soften the edge of that mask. Especially on a day like this where we have lots of atmospheric distortion, just adding a little bit of softness to the edge of that mask is going to make it look a little bit more realistic as it blends in. Same thing at the bottom down here where it blends into the water. We're going to use even more of that. We really want to just kind of use that blur mask tool to really soften the way that it blends in so that we get a little bit of the original water blending it over the top of the rock.
There we go. Now, we have one spot left right in here, this little keyhole area, where we need to remove that bit of blue. I'm going to use the masking brush to do that, and we'll turn on the perfect brush option. The perfect brush is really cool. It samples the color underneath the center of the brush, in this case, the blue of the sky. And now I can simply brush right through here, and it will remove the blue without painting out any of the rock. It's a really handy tool. Now we'll repeat what we did. We'll use our chisel tool just to widen that out a little bit. And we'll use the blur tool just to blur it just a little bit. There we go. Now when we zoom back to fit, you can see how that rock blends in and looks a lot more natural. All right, now it's time to blend in our sky. I actually want to put the sky behind the rock but on top of the wave. So I'm just going to grab the sky layer. I'll drag it down between the two and I'm going to turn it off. Now you notice it looks kind of funny right now. I kind of have the sky positioned where I want. I can always adjust that by using the transform tool and changing my layer opacity here. So what I'm kind of looking for when I align a sky is I want to make sure that the horizon lines kind of match. So I have the horizon line of the waves here and the horizon line of the waves down below. I kind of want to bring those down to about the same spot. Now I need to go a little bit lower so I can get rid of these headlands that are right up here. So I'm just going to tuck that down so they're just under the edge of the real waves. There we go. Something kind of like that. Let's turn that all the way up. Now to blend this together, I'm going to use the masking bug to do that. The masking bug lives over here in the tool well, just below the quick mask brush. It's a flexible gradient mask and it comes in a couple of different shapes. There's either a regular linear gradient shape, or I could do a round shape for the edges, or a reflected gradient shape where I'll just get a band that's masked. I find the presets is a great way to start. I'm just going to use the linear bottom preset here, and this will automatically place a bug here. And now all I do is I just move it around to define where I want that to be. If I hit the O key on my keyboard, you can actually see what that mask looks like. Clicking in the middle of the circle lets me move it. There's a rotate handle to rotate it, and the lines change the feather or how quickly it transitions. Let me hit the O key to turn that off again. And now what I'm trying to do is I just want to blend in that new sky on top of the other sky. It's already behind the rock and on top of the wave, so now it's just a matter of determining where I want that transition to be. I probably want it so that the feather line is right on the waves of the lower layer. So I kind of want it right about there. That's going to give me a nice natural transition. Now that we've built this up, let's say we want to take the whole photo into effects and stylize it more. Well, if I went into effects right now, it's only going to apply to the sky layer, but I can create what's called a merged composite layer, which stamps all of them together. And then I can work on that. So watch, I'll go up to the top. I'm going to right click and select new stamped layer. Rather than merging everything together, this creates one new layer that has everything on it, but yet it keeps all of my original layers separate, so I can always go back and change them if I want to. Now we can send this new layer off to effects. But before I do that, I'm going to make it a smart photo by clicking the gear icon down here. The great thing about a smart photo is that I can re-edit it non-destructively. So watch, I'm going to go to effects. Let's say I'm going to use a preset. I'm just going to make this black and white so it's really obvious, and I'm going to use the automatic black and white preset. There we go. I'll hit the done button. Now back in layers, you'll see the black and white results apply to that smart photo or that smart layer, and you'll see effects hanging off the bottom of it. Any module that you use will appear off the bottom. I can turn that on or off just by turning the eyeball. I can see the before and the after. And if I double click on it, I can go back and re-edit the photo. All of the slider positions and all the filters are in my stack are right where I left off. I'm just going to change my mind. Let's use something really obvious, like the glowing chocolate preset this time. There we go. We'll hit done. And there's my results back in layers. When I save this photo, it's going to save it as a regular Photoshop format file, so I can continue to re-edit it again in the future. Or I could take the photo to Photoshop and have access to the layers. The layers module really takes your creativity to the next level. It lets you combine photos together to create a new composition like we did in this case, or do common things like replacing skies or swapping heads. Thanks for watching.